David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University. We're talking about distributed loadings, which are forces spread over lengths or areas. We've talked about concentrated forces, such as vectors, represented by vectors, but really distributed loadings are more real world because real world, in the real world, loadings are distributed over a certain area. In this case, we're going to kind of look at them as distributed over pretty good areas or lengths. And we're going to kind of talk about this conceptualized loading. It's a function of the x distance from, the, from some end or some point. And uh, the load at any point along that curve is a magnitude w of x, a function of x, w of x. And so we're going to want to figure out what the resultant force of that distributed load, which is represented by this fr resultant force, is equal to the integral of the area under that curve, which is the integral of from 0 to L of wx dx. Each point along there, you have a little, it's really an elemental, an area. Um, you have a little elemental area that is dx wide. Draw these little strips. And the width of that is dx. And so you really have a little rectangle that's dx wide and wx tall, the function of wx. And so you just integrate that over that, that area to get the resultant force. And that resultant force acting at a point, which we're going to call x bar, from some point of reference, has the same effect as the distributed load, both the force and the moment that it creates. So we're going to calculate that x bar distance as the moment resultant divided by the force resultant, which is kind of like that d distance that we've been talking about with couples and uh, other moments, the shortest perpendicular distance. So we can write it in calculus form. It's the integral of wx dx, and then we're going to multiply by the distance to that point of reference, which is x of that little elemental strip that's wx tall by dx wide. We call that value the first moment of the area. The resultant force on the bottom is just the integral of wx dx, the integral of all those little elemental strips. That is the area. So we are also going to say x bar is the location where fr acts, where the resultant force acts. And it's the centroid of that area under the loading diagram. This is going to be our first introduction to centroids. I'm sure not your first introduction, but we're going to really use it a lot in engineering. So a couple of simple examples are this uh, rectangular uniformly distributed load of a value of x, I mean of w, over the length of L, where x is measured from the left end. Uh, that's a, in the book in uh, 4.6.2, Integration is used to derive these values, and uh, they're pretty intuitive, but refer to that section of the textbook 4.6.2 for the calculus behind this. We're going to say that this uniformly distributed load, this rectangle, it's the area under the rectangle, is the force, which is W, it's just a rectangle that's W tall by L wide or the base. So the area of a rectangle is obviously just WL so that's going to be the force and we can figure that X bar is the distance to the centroid of a rectangle which is right in the middle L over 2. Putting some numbers to it we have W is equal to 200 pounds per foot. So um, we have to have the per foot to make the units work out right if it's distributed over 8 feet, the force resultant is just 200 pounds per foot times 8 feet is equal to 1,600 pounds 
acting at a distance of L over 2 or 8 over 2 from that left end, 4 feet. Real simple, easy to understand, and makes sense. If we have a triangular shaped reload where it's 0 at this left end and it increases linearly to a value of W at this end over a length of L, it's the area of that triangle. We know from geometry and calculus that the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2, WL over 2. And we can say that the centroid of a triangle, the x-bar distance, is two-thirds from the tip, from the narrow, the small end of the triangle. So it's two-thirds of the, the base, in this case, two-thirds of L. Putting some numbers to it again, if I have W is 200 newtons per meter, at this peak value here, it's over 8 meters. My force resultant is 200 times 8 divided by 2, just the area of that triangle, 800 newtons. The x-bar distance is two-thirds of the distance from the tip, 5.33 meters, which is just 2 times 8 divided by 3. Then I can use these shapes and those properties in, uh, and combine them to figure out other resultants. I just break it into parts and figure out the resultant and then take the moments about some point and uh, use this formula just like this formula up here use a summation instead of an integral but it's the same thing so if I have a trapezoidal shaped loading 400 pounds per foot at this end 200 pounds per foot at this end over 8 feet I can break it up into a triangle and a rectangle each of which have 200 pounds per foot at their maximum value for the triangle and uniformly distributed for the rectangle over 8 feet. I can break the triangle up into what I call FR2 which is 200, pound, 200 pounds per foot times 8 feet divided by 2, 800 pounds. I can break the, uh, the rectangle part as just 200 times 8 or 1600 pounds. I can figure out each individual pieces centroid, centroid of part 2, FR2, is it um, one-third of the distance from the base, or the big end, which is, it's 8 feet, 8 divided by 3 is 2.66 feet, that's X bar 2. The rectangle is right in the center at 8 over 2, 4 feet, it's X bar 1. Now to get my the total result, and I just add up the sum of the forces, the resultant forces of each component, and I have 800 plus 1600, 2400 pounds, the sum of the forces. Sum of the moments about this point A at this left end is FR1, 1600 pounds times 4 feet, plus 800 pounds, FR2, times 2.66 feet. Do the math, I get 85.33 pound-feet. My real goal is to figure out what that uh, x-bar total, x-bar t as I've called it, distance is. That's just the sum of the moments divided by the sum of the forces. 85.33 divided by 2400 is 3.55 feet. Which makes sense, it's right between the 4 feet and the 2.66 feet from this left end. Finally, we're going to have some uh, uniformly or distributed loads that are functions of x, the distance. And if we say that just in the blue, don't look at the green yet, the load at any point along this curve is wx, a function of x. I can also equate that to an, a y, like on a graph, where y is the vertical component. X is measured from the left end. I have this loading over a length of L. My resultant is just the integral of this little elemental strip, dA, which is equal to a little rectangle, W as a function of X, or Y, kind of the way I think about it, high by dX wide. So it's just the integral of WX dX from 0 to L. 
Um, let's look, put, put some numbers to it. Um, so the resultant, if I have my function wx, w is a function of x, is 100x squared, and it's pounds per foot squared, which is, um, I have to use that to make the units work out. The integral of that, 100x squared, from 0 to 3, is 100x cubed over 3. Evaluate it from 0 to 3. That's the integral. 0 at 0, plug in x is equal equal to 0 in, x equal to 3, I get that this is 900 pounds for my resultant force of that loading over 3 feet. That kind of makes sense if I look at it, if I had this was like a triangle, if it was 900 times 3 feet divided by 2, it's 2700 divided by 2 is uh, 1350, and so this is, because it's curved, it's a lot less than that but 900 pounds sounds about right, feels about right. The moment resultant is the integral of x, this x distance of each little elemental strip that's dA. Each little strip that's dA is really made up of a rectangle. It's wx tall by dx, so I can write it out like this, integral of x that x distance times wx dx, which is dA, the same numbers to it, the moment resultant of 0 to 3 of x times wx, which is 100x squared dx, is equal to integral of 100x cubed dx, which the integral evaluated is 100 over 4, x to the fourth, plug in 0 and 3 for x, and I get 0 and 2025 pound feet. Finally, I've got to the point where I can do this calculation. X bar of the whole area is the sum of the moments divided by the sum of the forces, which is equal to the integral of the X DAs over the integral of DA, which is just the 2025 divided by 900 or 2.25 feet. Once again, making the analogy to a triangle, if it was a triangle, it would be two-thirds of that three-foot distance, or two feet. And so it's, it's bigger at this end than it would be for a triangle, so it shifts the x-bar distance a little bit more to the right, which is 2.25 feet. Makes sense. So we're going to evaluate some pretty complicated integrals in this class. And you can use Wolfram Alpha or a ti 36 um, pro, something to evaluate complicated integrals, but you should know how to evaluate this very simple format of the integral of x to the nth power dx is 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 power. You need to at least be able to do that in your head or on a test.